Hi everybody, welcome to EcoDriver. My name is Helmut. In this video, I'll show you how to drive the Volvo XC40 Recharge, that's the EV, as efficient as possible and we try to get the best possible consumption. This car is the dual motor 4VD version. Uh, 2VD will be brought onto the market at a later stage with 300 kilowatt power and unladen weight of 2183 kilograms that's 4803 pounds the WLTP consumption is 23.8 which is remarkably high and matches the average consumption on Sprint Monitor DE at around 23.5 we are doing our usual eco driver loop which you see here it's 75 kilometers 46 miles long we start at the southern edge of Innsbruck, climb up an elevation of around 360 meters, followed by some rolling hills, a descent, an open road section, motorway and 18 kilometers or 12 miles of city traffic at the end. After every section, we check the overall and sectoral consumption and at the end, we analyze the whole trip. The cameras will be on all the time. Don't worry, this video won't last two hours. It'll be fast forward most of the time. And why are the cameras on all the time? Well, A, for you to see how I am driving to achieve this consumption and B, to see that there is no need to go extra slow to be efficient. On the contrary, I guess we will see a lot of situations where others are preventing us from going faster. With this car, you don't have many options to change the settings for EV driving. You can deactivate one pedal drive, which I, of course, have done. There are no pedals at the steering wheel and no quick change to a stronger braking, as this needs to be done in the menu. Unfortunately, the weather isn't very good. Roads are wet, light rain, and we have only 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And the heating is on. So this will affect the result, but we'll see by how much. Nevertheless, I hope you enjoy this trip and I'll talk to you later. forty six point six kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers at the end of the hill climb this car is generally known for being not very efficient but of course I want to find this out myself I wouldn't be surprised if you stay significantly below 20 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers at the end which is much better than the official numbers but still some way away from the most efficient EVs out there we now come to the hilly section there it's important to, as I call it, play with the road. That means using the change of gradient in your favor, building up some speed, of course within the limits, on the way down, to take this kinetic energy onto the flat or into the next hill, and therefore reduce the amount of energy needed. It helps to slightly reduce the speed on the way up on short hills. I'm talking about two, three, maybe four kilometers an hour. That's enough to reduce the consumption, and when it flattens or goes down, then you can re-accelerate. Thirty-five point one kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers. 
at the end of the hills. On the way down, I try to avoid the active use of electricity. We have two short flat sections, which I try to pass in coast mode. Hopefully there is no other road user preventing us from doing so. At the end of the descent, we have 19.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. What's useful on the way down is the high power of the electric motors, which make sure that in most situations we have enough braking power, something weaker EVs suffer from. If you brake hard before a turn, then it might well happen that the necessary braking power can't be provided by the motors and the friction brakes are used. This means you don't use the full potential of the braking power, and that increases consumption and reduces range. Nineteen point two kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers at the end of the open road section. On the motorway, we have a limit of hundred kilometers an hour, except for EVs. But oh dear, there seems to be some kind of traffic jam. Well, we see how long this lasts and whether we can use the data from the motorway section. Well, I think we can't use this section data for the overall consumption as we were going very slow and no way near motorway speed. Here it says 18.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, but I think I will do a separate motorway test after this and then implement this data in the table to get a fair and usable result. In city traffic, it's important to keep the car in motion as we have over two tons to accelerate and even if you recuperate when braking, you never get back what you invested in the first place or have to invest afterwards. Talking of region, if you want to know how good this car regenerates in reality and how the consumption is on mountainous roads, I recommend the second video I've done with it. I'll put the link in the description box below and at the end of this video.
Even more rain towards the end of this trip, so the circumstances are really not perfect. And when we park the car in here, we see 18.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And now the details. Okay, uh, let's analyze the data of our trip with the Volvo XC40 Recharge. As mentioned during the trip, I did uh, an extra motorway trip uh, after this test uh, in order to uh, make up for the bad data we get uh, when we were driving on the motorway with all the traffic and the, the slow moving stop and go traffic and so on. And here you see the picture I have taken when I left the motorway. This was the pure consumption at approximately 100 kilometers an hour average speed. The cruise control is set to 110, you see here, and it's 19.0 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Here I show you the sectoral and overall consumption of the XC40. And when we look at the table with all the other cars, uh, where I put the results in order of the weight specific consumption, that's the column on the far right, then we see that this otherwise great car is pretty much bottom of the list. Yes, we had bad weather, but still it's not perfect. Um, it's great fun to drive and Volvos are great cars. I have, as I have an XC90 myself, but uh, others are doing better. Hopefully I get the two-wheel drive version uh, within the next couple of weeks and then we'll see how this car will perform. I have also done a mountain consumption and region test with the XC40 and if you want to see this you'll find the link to this video here and if you are generally interested in this topic and in my videos feel free to subscribe this channel over here and when you hit the notification bell you won't miss any new video. That's it for the XC40. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.